Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And today somebody reached out to me and they wanted to know how can they put the Geominist uh, font onto their web page, whether it be in ClickFunnels or really anywhere else. And so this isn't a Google font. It's not an Adobe font. This is just a an independent font uh, factory, basically here. It's a Tipo Foundry is where I found this here. I just Googled it and found it. And they got a lot of different kind of fonts in here. And so they wanted to put this font in particular onto their site. Now you can come over here and you can pay for the font family and get the entire font family because there's 18 different styles. I just downloaded what is the free font just to get started here. And it says here, pay with a share. So I shared it onto Facebook. And then after I shared it, it gave me the ability to then download the file. And over here is what it downloads. It downloads right here, the zip file. And then it automatically opens up the zip file on my Mac. And we want to look for the web font because we want to put this onto a website. And then you're going to come down here and you're going to take a look and you're going to look for what is known as a true type font or TTF file. You could use some of these other ones, but we're going to use a TTF. And here's the one for the italics version. And here's the one for the regular version. And we'll just, uh, we'll just do the regular version for starters. You would have to actually upload both of these uh, fonts right here. And if you if you downloaded the whole 18 pack, I would guess you have to download all 18 of them. I'm not sure. I have not done it. They may have somewhere where they have them all packaged together into one. I'm not exactly sure. But you'd follow the same kind of directions that we're going to go through right here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take that file and we need to store it somewhere. Now, if you're working in ClickFunnels, we can put it into the digital assets. If you're not in ClickFunnels, if you're on some other platform, you could put it into Google Drive or Dropbox or Amazon or somewhere else where you can store files out on the uh, cloud somewhere. So let's go into ClickFunnels first. We're going to come up here. We're going to add an asset. And then it's going to have us upload the file. So let's come back over here and we will grab a hole. Let me slide this over a little bit. And we'll grab a hold of this file right here. And we will drag it over and we will just drop it right on there where it says choose the file. And it says now Jominist regular web font dot TTF, true type font right there. And we're going to name this Geominist regular because this is the regular font. And that's the asset name. We don't need to fill out anything else. And we can just click on add. And now let's scroll down to the bottom of the page. And you can see right down here, we have it right there. And we'll come over here to the right, click on the three dots, and we're going to copy that asset path. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to go into our ClickFunnels account. We're going to come in here. We're going to open up your page. We're going to go to your custom CSS. You would go over to settings and then custom CSS. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in this code right here. So we have here, it says at font dash face. You got your left curly bracket, you got your right curly bracket down here, and then we give the font family a name. So we say font family colon geominist right there just to give it a name so we can call it then later. And then we put in our source URL and then in quotes we just dump in that entire address that we just pulled out of our digital assets. So that tells it where to go and find that file that we uploaded in the digital assets. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a hold of a text element and we're going to say, okay, now we want to apply this font to that text element. So let's come over here and I got a paragraph element right here. So let's click on the gear, come down, we'll grab the hashtag and then we will copy this out. We'll go back into our CSS and we will patch in that uh, CSS ID selector. And we're going to again put in a couple of curly brackets. And then up here we're going to tell it we want this to have a font family, F-A-M-L-I-Y, colon of Geominist. So we have Geominist. And let's just put a semicolon at the end of this here. So now it should have changed whatever font this was to Geominus. Now let's just turn this back off and see if the font changes. Yeah, you can see right there, it's kind of slight, but it, uh, 
it changes the font. So we definitely know that we are now in Geominus. Now, because this is one word, there's no spaces in it. Because if you, you can have them sometimes where there'll be spaces in there. If there's spaces in there, you want to put quotes around it. If there's no spaces, you don't have to worry about it. Now, after this, we can put in a couple of things. We can put in just regular old sans serif. So what we're saying here is if it cannot, for some reason, display the Geominus font, we want it to display the sans serif font. So that's one of the things you can do there. And also, you can come in here and you can say, if it can't display the Geominus font, let's display a font that's much more common, like an Arial font or something like that. So we'll put in Arial as well and put in another comma. So what we're doing here is we're saying if for some reason, if you're on an old browser or something like that, it can't display Geominist, then default back to the Arial font, which is more likely that something's going to be able to display, because I'm pretty sure that's a Google font. And if it can't do that, whatever the base sans serif font is for that browser, use that to display the content. So again, here we come in, we can turn turn the font on, we can turn the font off, and you can see it over here on the right-hand side changing it. Now let's see what we can do here because this is just the regular font weight. So I think if I change the font weight, it's not going to work, but let's just try this here live to see what it does. So we're going to say here font weight of, let's just put in 900 and see what it does. Okay, so it did change the font weight to 900. But now let's come down here and see if we go to 700. Yeah, see, it's the same font weight at 900 or 700. So that's why there are 18 different fonts in here. So you can go in, you can pick out the ones you want and put them in there. So what I would suggest is as you're putting this in, only put in the definitions that you absolutely need. So if you need a 900 font italic, put in the 900 weight font italic and only put that in. Don't put in all 18 of them because it's going to really slow down the page load time because it has to go out and find that file every single time. So only put in the font weights that you want. Only if you, if you don't need italics, don't put in any of the italics. Just put in the font weights, the one or two or three that you're going to use. Put those in there and then that is all you have to do. So go out, do that. Oh, and the one last thing here is, so if you are in Google Drive, something like that, you would do the exact same thing over here. You would come over, you would grab your font weight. We're just going to drag it in here, drop it in. Let's see if it uh, uploads it. Okay, so it's going to start uploading it. When it's done uploading it, uh, maybe done already. Let's see here. What do we have? Um... Well, okay, I clicked on it and it showed me the whole thing here, but that's not what I'm looking for. Let's see if I can find it on my page. Okay, now we'll just right-click on this here, and let's see here. Let's get the link and see what it gives us here. Get a link. Uh, people won't be notified. Changing the link option won't notify people. Okay, got it. Restricted, only people added, so we don't want to do that. So we're just going to copy this link right here. And we're going to go back into ClickFunnels and let me widen this back out a little bit and we will take out the URL we had in here, which I made a mistake and so the, the uh, different URL is already in there, but we'll just put in the one we're looking for. And now we have that and let's just see here. Let's see if we can turn that font family on and off and see if it changes and it sure does. So let me just skinny bit this back down a little bit. And so watch over here as I turn the font family back on. It changes it. It's only slight, but it does definitely change it. And then let's check the font weight. And the font weight is good there. But now let's turn that font weight off because I want to check one more thing. So let's go into the paragraph itself. And let's just highlight the whole thing. And let's put on bold. And so the bold does work. So we know that if you're using the regular font, you can either be at a font weight of 400 or at 700 because those are the two defaults for regular and bold inside a click funnel. So you don't have to pull in a regular font weight of 400 or regular font weight of 700. And then let's also see if we can turn on the italics or not. And yes, you can. 
So you don't have to worry, no matter what font weight you pull in, you don't have to worry about the italics either. So you can just probably, uh, for the most part, just pull in just the regular definition that I pulled in right up here. Just pull in that regular one, or more accurately, whatever you can pull from here, which is free. You can probably just pull in that regular one, and then just with the browser itself, with the, uh, with the builder itself, I should say, you can change the font weight to bold and also change everything to italics. So that is it for this lesson. If you got any questions, just let me know.